Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1430. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook file, either the start file or the finish file so you could follow along, click on the link below the video. Wow, now we're talking real fun. We get to talk about XNPV and XIRR DAX functions for irregular cash flow, net present value, and internal rate of return calculations. Now, anytime you get to talk about financial cash flow analysis, whatever tool you're using, we're talking fun and usefulness. Now, I've already done an extensive 115 video playlist all about finance and all the financial functions. And there are many different financial functions in finance. So you can go look at this reference video here. In particular, video 81 talks about the amazing XNVP and XIRR. Now, what distinguishes the X functions from the normal NPV and IRR is that we're not limited to periodic, even time payments. Both of these functions can take any cash flows regardless of the time between the cash flows and give you net present value and the internal rate of return. Now, in this video, I'm not going to go into the algorithm for how these two functions work. Go watch this video. I even show you the exact algorithm, including how XNMPV uses the proportion of a 365 day year for its irregular time calculations, as opposed to the present value that just uses increments of years. So I'm not going to cover that in this video. But if you want to learn, there's the video and there's a whole playlist. Now, I've already done one DAX example here. You can come look at it in the workbook. It does the exact same example as video 81 in this series. We want to scroll down here and look at the example we're going to do. Here's the table we're going to use. And we have a column called Project. So Project A, there are the dates for each one of the cash flows, and there are the cash flows. By the way, this example right here, Project A, is the same as the one above. But this table has many different projects we're considering and many different cash flows. And so we want an easy way to build one formula that will instantly give us net present value and IRR for each one of the projects. We also have this lookup table or dimension table that has the required rate of return for each one of the projects. That's the hurdle over which if we cannot get above these rates, we can't consider the project as a possible project to take on. Now, if I click in the pivot table, I've already added both the dimension required rate of return for projects table, that's this one, and F many cash flows projects, that's this table. If we go over to Power Pivot, Data Model, I've already added the tables and built a relationship. So the project has a unique list here with the required rate of return for each project. Then, of course, we have many cash flows associated with the project over here, including the date and cash flow. If we go over to Data View, here's our F many cash flows. And we want to build our formula down here. So I'm going to click in the measure grid up in the formula bar. Net present value for project, colon, equal sign. And guess what? It's named the exact same thing as over in Excel. We're going to start with XNPV, net present value. That means the discounted cash flows. What are all of those cash flows worth today at time 0, given a particular required rate of return? Now we have a table that we have to iterate over. So F, and we have two tables. This is from the example you can go out and look at, but the one we're interested in is F, many cash flow project, tab, comma. The values, those are the cash flows. So FM, there's our table, and we down arrow to cash flows, tab. Now remember, this cash flow column is all the cash flows for all the projects. But because the pivot table is going to have the project in the row area, that filter or criteria will flow in. So for example, project A will flow in and filter down the cash flow column just to project A, comma. And then we need the dates, FM, down arrow to date, tab. 
And again, what's so beautiful about the X functions for MPV and IRR is you don't need to have equal time periods between each date, like you would if you were using the present value function or the future value function or PMT function, comma. And then we need our rate. Now, a couple videos ago, I did a few different DAX videos. And a few of the comments said, how do you access a value over in the Excel spreadsheet? Well, here's how you do it. You use the values function. Values tab, values, we'll look at the pivot table filter context and give us a unique list. So if we have project from the lookup or dimension RRR for projects table, because there's only one of those projects in each row, values will look to the filter context and deliver just that row in the dimension or lookup table. So I'm going to down arrow DRR for project. And the RRR, that's the required return. Now, when we get down to the grand total cell, there will be a problem because it will deliver multiple values. But for each row in the values area, values will do its job, getting just a single RRR. Close parentheses. There's our rate. Close parentheses and Enter. There's our error. And if you hover your cursor, at the very end, it says a table of multiple values was supplied when a single value was expected. So we have to turn this off when it gets to the grand total. So the way we're going to do that is by using the if function. And logical test, we're just going to ask the question, has one value? Does the column DRR for project project have exactly one value, close parentheses. Of course, the filter context flows in. And for the values area, for each row in the values area, has one value will return a true, comma. Value if true, there's our formula. We leave off the third argument because we want to display a blank. The blank function in DAX is a substitute for an empty cell in Excel or a null value in a database. Close parentheses and Enter. Now let's Alt-Tab. I'm going to drag my new measure down to the values area. And there it is. I can see, what did I forget? Number formatting, Alt-Tab. With that cell selected, I go up and I'm going to select English. Alt-Tab, and there we go. Now Alt-Tab, let's go back over here. We'll calculate right below net present value. Internal rate of return, colon, equal sign, XIRR. The table is going to be FM, tab, comma. It's the same argument. It's FM, and we need the values, which are our cash flows, tab, FM, down arrow to our irregular dates, comma. Now guess. If you put a guess that you think is close, it can help with the iterative process that IRR has to go through as it's trying to hone in on a value for the IRR. But most of the time, you don't need that, so you can leave that argument off. That's the same over in Excel also. So that's it. Close parentheses and Enter. I see I have a decimal. I can format this with a percentage if I want. Let's do this button right here, and that adds percentage with two decimals. Alt-Tab. Now I drag my internal rate of return down over here. And just like that, I have my pivot table with net present value and my internal rate of return. You know, I don't really need net present value for project because I have the project over here. Alt-Tab. Click on the cell, and I'm going to edit this up in the formula bar backspace and Enter, Alt-Tab, and there we go. Now, of course, our table over here is completely dynamic. If we made a mistake, for example, this cash flow right here was not 700. It was minus 1,000. I can simply change it in the table or add new records to the bottom of the table. Come over here, right click, refresh. And just like that, we get an updated net present value internal rate of return. All right, that's a little bit about how to use the XNPV function and the XIRR function over here in DAX. I encourage you, if you are interested in different financial calculations in Excel, to check out this playlist. All right, we'll see you next video.